हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू आई सी एस आई जी एस टी वीडियो क्लासेस टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू कवर टॉपिक कॉम्पोजिशन की और कॉम्पोजिशन लेवी फ्रेंड्स दिस कॉम्पोजिशन लेवी इज बेसिकली कवर्ड अंडर सेक्शन टेन ऑफ सी जी एस टी एक्ट टू थाउजेंड सेवेंटीन फॉर योर इंफॉर्मेशन आई वुड लाइक टू टेल यू हियर दैट वाइल रीडिंग दिस सी जी एस टी एक्ट टू थाउजेंड सेवेंटीन यू विल फाइंड दैट वेरियस प्लेसेज द मैंशन ऑफ दिस सेक्शन टेन सो यू मस्ट ऑलवेज रिमेंबर दैट दिस सेक्शन टेन इज रिलेटेड टू composition levy right according to me this composition scheme this composition levy actually is a small world in gst because this scheme is different from the regular scheme which is drafted under the act and this composition uh, levy which is covered under section 10 it has its own advantages right before discussing the advantages first i would like to clarify or would like to tell you what actually is this composition levy is the composition levy is actually the it's a alternative method of levy the tax designed for the tax payers whose turnover is up to the 75 lakhs and rupees 50 lakhs in case of few states now friends when this act was uh, rolled out on uh, 1st july 2017 at that time this limit was 50 lakhs and 25 lakhs in few cases thereafter there were some changes and uh, after the changes the limit was 75 lakh and 50 lakhs in few cases and uh, very interesting to know that the last meeting of gst council which was held on 6th of of october 2017 that was the 22nd gst council meeting in that meeting now it is decided that composition levy can be opted if your aggregate turnover is up to rupees 1 crore so friends in the slide now it's shown that it's a 75 lakh but i would like to tell you the recent updates recent notification of gst and as per the recent what is the limit limit is not right now the 75 lakh now the limit is 1 crores <coughs> and uh, uh, the maximum limit the aggregate limit which is actually prescribed in the cgst act of which the council has the authority that too is 1 crore what it means it means now they have exhausted the upper limit now now friends uh, this is not the compulsion that if your turnover your aggregate turnover is uh, minimum uh, less than 70 uh, 1 crore sorry then it doesn't mean it is a mandatory on you to opt the composition scheme no this composition scheme is optional for you because there are so many conditions first of all you have to fulfill those if you are fulfilling those conditions only then you can opt this composition scheme provided your aggregate turnover is less than rupees 1 crore so friends i use the term aggregate turnover in composition scheme it is very important to know what is aggregate turnover because the eligibility the basic eligibility criteria is dependent on the aggregate turnover so it is very important to know the calculation and the meaning of aggregate turnover now what you will include in aggregate turnover for example your total taxable supplies will be included even your exempt supplies will also be added in aggregate turnover please keep this thing in mind that you will include the exempt supplies as well then if you are exporting something you are doing some export business even that turnover will also be added here right this is the uh, points which will be included in the calculation 
and certain things will be excluded while making the calculations and the one point here is inward supplies under the reverse charge. You will not include this reverse charge inward supplies. And again one more point that your central state or you at uh, UT and the integrated taxes and says they will also be excluded from the calculation of your aggregate turnover and it will be the one pan basis calculation right. Now as I told you that there are certain conditions, there are certain limitations uh, with respect to the composition scheme and uh, now through this slide I am going to explain you that who cannot avail the composition scheme. First of all if the person is a casual taxable person or the non-resident taxable person these type of people they cannot avail the scheme. Thereafter for example if you are making the supply of services even then you cannot opt the scheme but there is a one exception and the exception for the services is restaurant uh, business. Then <clears throat> for example and the person supplying goods which are not taxable under the GST those people can also they can't avail this composition scheme. Thereafter if you are making some interstate outward supplies so it means what it means that your business should be intrastate only. For example, I would like to clear this point through the example. For example, if I am doing a business in Delhi, I am uh, making the sales only in Delhi. It means my sales, my supply is in Delhi only. I am not selling outside, only inside the Delhi. It means this is called the intra-state transaction. Then composition scheme is allowed. For example, now I want to sell my goods from Delhi to UP. Under this circumstance there is a inter-state outward supplies. So under this condition I cannot avail composition scheme, right? Another point which will not allow me to opt this composition scheme is if I am supplying some goods or services or both through the electronic commerce operator even then a person a taxpayer or the eligible person he cannot avail the benefit of this composition scheme. Now very important point to be noted here I am mentioning that interstate supply is not allowed under composition but I can purchase interstate interstate here means my business is in Delhi. But I can purchase from the UP, for example if I need the raw material, I can purchase the raw material in what supplies even from Maharashtra or any state of the country. There is not any restriction under composition supply for making the inward supplies, right? Now friends, we will cover the journey of this composition scheme. Now first of all, for example, if I know that this is my turnover, yes, I can avail the composition scheme, okay, I am not falling under any restrictions under the composition scheme that I am fulfilling all the constraints. Now there is a no problem in opting this composition scheme. Now the journey of the registration will start. Now the first step if I want to enter in the GST regime, if I want to enter, if I want to register myself as a composite dealer, then the first requirement or the first situation, in fact this is a situation, is the provisional registration. And this provisional registration concept arised at the time of transition, that is July 1, 2017, because at that time, Many taxpayers they were already registered in, some were registered in VAT, some were registered in <coughs> excise, service tax. They were under the existing scheme, under that scheme. Now for example under the GST regime if they want to opt the composition scheme then what is the procedure? What is the route for those people who at the time of transition? 
for the government through GST app they prescribe the form CMP01 by filing this form you can inform that uh, you want to opt composition scheme. So this is the one thing. Now second situation is the new registration. For example, I want to now take the registration. I feel that yes, I can opt the composition scheme and I am a new registrant here. Then uh, within the 30 days of my obligation to get registration, I will file form REG01. This is the same form which is filed for the even the regular scheme and in this form there is a one separate column in which you will mention that you want to opt the composition scheme. Then through the, in this regime you will get the registration as a composite dealer. This is the second situation of entering into the composition scheme. Now the third situation. For example, now I am registered on 1st of July as a regular taxpayer, right? But now during the year I took a decision that no, I want to now opt the composition scheme, right? Now let me tell you that with dura during the year you cannot opt the actually the composition scheme. Because this composition scheme is available at the beginning of the financial year. So what is the meaning here? Now I ex will explain the meaning here through one example. For example, if I feel that on uh, 1st of November, now I want to take the composition scheme. And till the 1st of November, I am a regular taxpayer in the GST. Now government here will not allow me to uh, switch over in the composition scheme. Now what is the procedure? Now I have to file CMP02 and I will intimate that from the beginning of the next financial year I will opt composition scheme. What it means? Composition scheme to me will be given from the 1st April 2018. I will not be allowed to take the composition scheme from the 1st November 2017 because this is the conditions prescribed under law. Now friends the first journey in this journey first step we have covered that we have taken a registration under composition scheme. Now see. Now we will study through this slide the effective date of my composition. Now under the first situation if I am through transition definitely if I am through transition then the first applicable date uh, effective date for me will be 1st July 2017. For example if I have opted the new registration definitely uh, the date on which I am liable to be registered uh, I am liable to get the registration. For example, I am a new registrant, like I was not doing any business, but now I want to register my business as a composite dealer. So under this situation, uh, the effective date will be the date which I am supposed to be registered as per the law. So re GST registration part is over now. First step we have taken that we have taken a registration under composition scheme, right? Through this diagram, through this representation, we will come to know about the effective dates which I have explained you earlier, right? Now you can study the effective dates through this chart. Uh, thereafter, friends, now I have, I am registered under composition scheme. Now thereafter, there are certain post uh, registration obligations on me because I am a composite dealer, there are certain obligations. Now first of the obligation on the composite dealer will be to issue bill of supply. Very important point here because the composite dealers they cannot issue the tax invoice because they are not collecting tax from the ultimate consumer. The tax paid by them is the cost for them. So it means they cannot issue the tax invoice and in substitute to their tax invoice 
in which tax will not be charged by them and that format that sheet will be called as a bill of supply instead of tax invoice right this is the one post obligation on the composite uh, dealer second thing now you have a bill to which you are calling as a bill of supply on this bill it should be clearly mentioned that composition taxable person not eligible to collect tax on supplies so this phrase must be written on the top of the bill of supply this is the another requirement another obligation and the same statement he will also display in his premises as well so that what's the reason behind so that the customer or the person who are dealing with him they keen to know that this person is not the regular tax payer but he is the composite dealer and he is not allowed to charge tax from the ultimate consumer but that doesn't mean that there is a not a component of tax in this because this tax uh, will be paid by the uh, supplier composite supplier and it will become his cost now next point that he will not charge any tax from the customer i explained it earlier now one more thing <coughs> for example this situation arises at the time of the transition because earlier before the 1st of july for example i was the regular tax payer now under this gst now i have taken a composition scheme now at this transition time i am supposed to tell the details of my stock now for this prescribed form it is cmp03 where i will mention my details for the stock right now friends now it's clear i have taken registration i know the scheme i know my obligations now i have one more obligation with respect to the rate of tax that how much rate of tax i will uh, i will have to pay to the government of india so this is actually the main advantage of this composition scheme that there is a one one rate of tax like you are not falling under uh, the ambiguity that what rate you have to charge actually if you are a composite dealer and uh, if you are a for example a manufacturer then manufacturer will pay gst 2% traders they will pay 1% and the restaurant services they will pay total 5% here uh, through the chart you can come to know that how this 2% is calculated here 1% is for cgst 1% is for sgst again for traders in 1% calculation 0.5% is for cgst 0.5% is for sgst similarly 2.5% for cgst and 2.5% for sgst in case of the restaurant services by making it total 5% so this is actually the main beauty of this composition scheme because now you are not burdened with knowing the n number of rates here the concept is very much clear that the, this is the one rate you will apply you will calculate this rate on the aggregate turnover right by multiplying this rate with the aggregate turnover you will make the payment of this tax to government exchequer now friends the next step the next step is with respect to because now you have collected the tax now the tax is with you now you know that how much rate of tax you have to pay to government now how will you pay the tax tax is paid through filing of the returns now this is the next step in this journey that is the filing of returns again the beauty of this concept uh, composition 
that government has relaxed the composite dealers from making the filings on the monthly basis here they have asked that okay you file the quarterly returns and even you will pay the quarterly tax right so which form here uh, will be applicable gstr 4 this is the form you will file after the end of the quarter before the uh, 18th of next month after the completion of one quarter you will make the filing through gstr 4 you will also pay the tax to the government tax checker one more return will be filed which is called the annual return and for composition scheme the name of this uh, form is gstr 9a this is the annual return and these two formats like gstr 4 and gstr 9a both are very simple form very easy to fill so these composite dealers they are relaxed from the filing even the format is not complicated these formats they are these forms they are too simple to fill it means this scheme once you opted the scheme this scheme is very much beneficial now you are running your business under the scheme composition scheme you are enjoying the benefits of it you are not at all bothered with the rate of taxes one rate is applicable on you you are running your business under uh, by fulfilling all the conditions of composition scheme now for example one day what happened you cross the limit of 1 crore now it means now the basic eligibility criteria is no more applicable on you what it means now you cannot enjoy the benefits of composition scheme now you have to come out of the scheme now there is again a procedure to exit that how i will come out of the scheme to exit from the scheme the prescribed form is cmp04 this is the exit form that now i don't want to opt this composition scheme this is the intimation you will give to government okay now i am out of the scheme now i want to run my business as a regular taxpayer now i am entering into the regular scheme again i will have to tell the stock line with me because definitely now i have a stock the information of this stock i will again intimate through form itc01 now this is also the intimation that this is the total stock lying with me and this is the total information which you will provide within the 30 days of the withdrawal from the scheme right now you are out of this scheme now it's not mandatory that you cross the limit you cross the threshold limit only then you can exit from the scheme even voluntarily you can exit from the scheme also for example during the year you feel that no i don't want to avail the scheme or certain situation may happen for example now i am doing business in delhi interested business i am selling only in delhi but now i got the opportunity to make sellings or making supplies in for example maharashtra tamil nadu then under those situations i cannot make a supply because the composition scheme has restricted me to make the interstate supplies now what is option with me now the option with me to immediately uh, exit from the scheme so that it will not put any hindrance on me to make the supplies interstate right so voluntarily at any time now here i also want to mention that even during the year at any time i can exit there is a bar on the entry but there is not at all any bar on the exit at any time for example on 1st july through the transition i opted the composition scheme but in the december i feel that no 
I want to exit from the scheme. Even in the December, I can exit from the scheme. There is a not any hindrance on uh, exit here, right? So friends, uh, the next point, uh, cancellation of composition scheme, even the proper officer can cancel the composition scheme for a particular taxpayer, under what circumstances he can do. For example, you have uh, opted the scheme wrongly actually, then notice will be sent to you, you have to make a reply to such type of show cause notices and thereafter he can even cancel your uh, composition scheme, right? This is the material which I have provided here for your information and for your reading here. Now, for example, here you have to be very vigilant before opting the composition scheme, reason being the consequences of contravention of any of the composition levy, they are very hard because you can be penalized under section 73 or section 74. So it means before taking decision to enter into the composition scheme, it is very important to know the various conditions under the composition scheme. This is very important. So always be vigilant before opting the composition scheme. Now here it is a time to in make an interpretation because as I told you there are extringent uh, penalties if I am wrongly opting the composition scheme. So the interpretation part is here very important. First point cannot provide the services along with the goods supply here that I should not be the service provider because only the restaurant business they are allowed to take the composition scheme. Thereafter another point is that not dealing in the tax free or the zero rated supply. Why I am not allowed here the zero rated supply? Because the zero rated supply means here the exports and exports are always called the interstate supplies. The moment I am saying that it is an interstate supply, it means I cannot take composition scheme, right? That is why zero rated supplies are not allowed to take composition scheme. One interesting thing here, <clears throat> very interesting thing that under the composition scheme you cannot avail the ITC. This is actually some hardship in case of uh, composition scheme. Actually I will not say it is a hardship, this is the structure of the scheme that you cannot avail the ITC here. Because for example, if I am buying something, if I had something is my inward supplies, I have paid tax on all those inward supplies. Now on these supplies, inward supplies, I cannot avail the input tax credit, it will become my cost, right? So you have to consider this point before opting the scheme, then the scheme is totally optional. And uh, thereafter, uh, one more thing, very interesting thing, manufacturer of ice cream, pan masala, tobacco, they are not, not allowed to take this scheme. Many times the people used to make a mistake here because uh, restaurants, they are allowed to take this scheme. Many times they are also the manufacturer of the ice creams and they are selling that ice cream in their restaurants. If they are doing such type of activity at that time, they are not allowed to take the composition scheme, although they are defined as restaurant. So this point too, they have to consider before taking composition scheme. One another thing that now under composition scheme, I cannot sell my products, my goods, my services through e-commerce operator. For example, if I am doing a restaurant business and I am taking the uh, book, I am taking the orders from the Zomato for example. Now I am dealing through the e-commerce operator, I am getting the supplies, I am taking, sorry, I am taking the orders from there as well. It means now I am not allowed to take composition scheme. 
thereafter they cannot collect the tax from the customer many times i have even observed the people what they are doing they are collecting this 1% 2% and the 5% the rates prescribed for under the composition scheme they are collecting this rate from the customer which is the wrong practice actually government has clearly mentioned that this 1% 2% and the 1 5% rate which is uh, prescribed by the government they are not to be collected from the ultimate consumer because this is the part of your cost it should not be shown in your bill of supply because this is your cost so another point they cannot issue tax invoice now question arise why they cannot issue the tax invoice because they cannot collect tax from customer this is the reason very very interesting point here which many people are doing actually mistake what they are feeling that now they have a one pan against that pan they have n number of business for example in delhi up maharashtra gujarat they are doing business under that one pan now they they are understanding that they can opt composition scheme in one state and they can opt the regular scheme in another state this is actually the wrong practice this is the wrong because if you opt for composition scheme in one state for example i opted the composition scheme in delhi and i have a, another business in up then in both the businesses i have to take the composition scheme this is the mandatory and the moment i am withdrawing or i am coming out of the composition scheme in a one state it's a implied that i am coming out of the composition scheme in rest of the states also so this is very important point to be noted here so now the final analysis about this scheme why this scheme is good for us why we should opt this scheme or why we should not opt the scheme first thing which is very important here is the reduction in the compliance cost there is a less compliance cost why there is a less compliance cost because there is a filing of quarter returns i am not supposed to file my returns every month definitely i am not going to pay any fees to the professional every month or paying the tax every month so i am relaxed from the burden of monthly filings this is one of the advantage of opting the scheme composition scheme and uh, i would say this is the disadvantage that no itc is allowed for the companies because that itc will become the part of the cost for the company then another advantage is accounts and records maintenance is very simple because under the regular scheme there are huge burden there are prescribed formats there are certain conditions which are prescribed for the maintenance of accounts and records but under the composition scheme you are relaxed from in fact the process is very simple the simplified way of maintaining your accounts and records is there and uh, one another advantage of uh, opting this composition scheme is item wise record is not required to be maintained here so we are rela relaxed from this obligation as well another advantage a uh, composite dealer are supposed to make a lump sum tax at very nominal rate this is also the advantage because i have seen many restaurant people they were charging the wrong rate of taxes initially they were not clear whether to apply 12% rate 18% rate 5% rate there were so many ambiguities with respect to the rates but under the composition scheme there is not at all so in uh, the another advantage of uh, composition scheme is that there is not any requirement of maintaining the item wise records and further uh, correlating the sales with the purchase it is totally done away so this is the uh, main advantage of this uh, composition scheme thereafter the lump sum tax rate at very nominal rate is prescribed here 
so it means now you are not burdened with the uh, knowing the so many rates actually there is not at all any ambiguity in this case because if you are a manufacturer then it means only 1% rate is applicable if you are a trader only 2% rate is applicable if you are a restaurant uh, your business is restaurant then in that case only 5% rate is applicable you need not to know the rate for your product here so this is the one of the advantage and thereafter <coughs> uh, another point which i will not say here the advantage actually this is the disadvantage for the composite dealers that they cannot avail the uh, they cannot do the interstate supplies so it means in crux in nutshell i can say that this scheme is useful for the taxpayers who are doing their business at small scale whose turnover is below 1 crore rupees and uh, they are doing only the intrastate supplies of their product or services and uh, there is not any hardship on them of availing uh, uh, itc so in conclusion in nutshell i will say that this composition is good for those taxpayers in fact the small taxpayers whose turnover is below 1 crore rupees and who are doing only the intrastate supplies and uh, they don't want to avail the itc and availing of the itc is not even beneficial for them so under so this situation uh, this scheme is very beneficial and it will really relax you from the monthly compliances and return filing is very simple form it is very simple and compliance part is very simple and by following this uh, compliances you can do your business very smoothly thanks friends for listening this video i wish all of you become excellent professionals and contribute towards the motto icsi india's gst partner thank you very much